Hello again and welcome modelers. Well tonight we're doing a review on the 11000 scale USS Enterprise NCC 1701B from AMT Round 2. Uh, this starship was actually first seen in the major motion picture Star Trek Generations. Uh, it was in Trek circles it's known as Kirk's Last Ride. Uh, basically those of you that have seen the movie the plot involves uh, the ship is seen at the very beginning leaving for its maiden voyage Kirk, Chekhov, and Scotty are on board, uh, kind of doing some publicity for the Federation to help uh, make the first launch of this ship special. And then on the way, uh, they run into a problem, of course, and uh, the Enterprise B isn't fully equipped at that point to take on anything, but they're the nearest ship available, so they respond to the call. There's some freighters in some trouble. There's a rift going on in space. Uh, there's some nasty stuff going on with some energy stuff, and... Uh, as they enter the area to try to rescue these ships, um, they have to make some adjustments to the to the deflector system to try to uh, solve the problem they're dealing with. And uh, the result is an, en an energy release of some kind, kind of blows a big hole in the uh, the ship here in this section right here. And that happens to be where Captain Kirk volunteered to uh, go down and work on the uh, changes to the deflector system and. Uh, is presumed lost after that so that's kind of where the history of this ship fits into Trek uh, on the back side here we can see uh, kind of the familiar artwork we're getting used to on these new round two releases you've got some artwork here of this ship in action and you've got an actual photo here of the assembled model as well as some advertisements for the other ships that are uh, some of the other kits that are available the Enterprise D and the Reliant um, and this area here kind of covers some of the details of the ship that I just went over. Um, so this ship is very similar to the Enterprise C that I just finished a while ago. Uh, it's also known as the Excelsior Refit. Uh, you can see it's uh, got a lot of the same look to it as the Excelsior. There's differences being in the, in the warp engine nacelles and uh, the lower engineering section is a little bit kind of bulkier on this ship than it was on the uh, Excelsior. So uh, yeah, this is, a, this is a, a nice kit. Now this kit's been on the market for a while. Uh, there has been some retooling done, which I'll show you a little bit of, uh, which is mainly in this lower area of the primary hull or the saucer section. You'll see that there's a little bit of changes that have been made there. Uh, other than that, as far as I can tell, the tooling's pretty much the same. Uh, I'm going to stop the camera here for a second, and when I come back, I'll lay out the parts here, and we can start taking a look at what you get inside this uh, box and uh, what, you, what you can expect if you decide to get one of these yourself and put it together. Okay, we're back, and here you can see that I've got laid out the uh, the upper and lower saucer halves. And uh, as far as I can tell, looking at this, I built one of these. Uh, I built one of these quite a few years ago. I believe when the Enterprise B kit was first released by AMT Ertl. And um, I can't see any really changes that I can say offhand on the top of this piece. Uh, there's there's some nice detail here, similar to the Enterprise C. We've got these little life. Uh, escape pods in place on the top in various positions and different sizes. We've got some pretty good detail on the bridge area uh, and we've got some paneling detail around the uh, center section here and some some really nice uh, detail on the uh, impulse engine decks. Uh, so that looks pretty good. And here on the lower section we can see uh, uh, this, this area here is pretty much the same as it was before. I don't see any changes to any of the tooling in the center area here, the sensor dome or any of these grid lines, but here where the neck assembly uh, uh, fits on this, which was kind of troublesome on the original kits. If you go over to Hobby Talk or some of those other places and read up on this model, you'll see that there's quite a bit of info out there about it. But uh, this has been redesigned here, and the neck piece itself has been redesigned a little bit, and it, all in the effort to make it fit a little bit better and give it a little bit more accuracy uh, as far as uh, what's been put out uh, PR-wise by AMT and Round 2 on what they did to correct this model. And uh, just for reference here, just for scale, this is the uh, 1 1,000th uh, original Enterprise saucer compared to this one. And you can see that this is quite a large ship compared to the original Enterprise. And uh, so we have those two parts there. Next up we have some uh, parts that belong to the warp engines. We have the pylons, pylon assembly. Uh, this is basically an on top thing. It sits on top of the secondary hull. These two halves go together. And then the uh, warp nacelle halves. And we have some of our clear parts here. Basically what you're looking at is you've, you've got all your lenses for your warp uh, 
plasma grills, your Boussard collectors at the front, which are blue instead of red as normal on this particular ship. And we've got some different uh, screens here for our impulse engine outputs. And this very, very small, compared to the size of this sheep, uh, ship, uh, deflector dish here. So uh, it's nice, again, that they provided these parts in clear. So if you do intend on lighting it, you've already got that uh, problem you don't have to deal with. And here we see some more parts. This is basically the top of the uh, secondary hull and the two side pieces. Uh, this, this particular model has uh, quite, a fit, quite a bit more pieces than the uh, Enterprise C, which I just did. And um, so, yeah, there's a little bit more detail to this ship as far as uh, overall sub-assemblies that go together on it. Uh, you've got more parts here for the secondary hull. You've got some areas here for the, for the uh, little pieces here for the uh, detail on the warp nacelles. And we see the front uh, caps, if you will, for the top of the front warp nacelles. And I always thought these were kind of a neat design. They almost remind me of the uh, the helmet from the Rocketeer movie, that little kind of fin thing there on the top. Uh, very kind of uh, art art uh, deco, if you want to call that. Uh, looks like something right out of the 20s or the 30s. Kind of neat. And uh, some detail parts here. Um, we can see that the neck has been changed just a little bit as far as how it mounts. And uh, the ribbing detail on this is uh, nice and crisp. Looks like these lines carry all the way through here pretty nicely and nice and straight and don't fade at any point. So uh, the parts uh, detail of this is, is pretty good. And here we have the uh, stand. Uh, <clears throat> kind of strange. Uh, this ship is actually quite a bit longer than the uh, than the sea, and uh, yet the stand is actually smaller in diameter. So that's kind of strange. And they did include the swivel socket with this one. So apparently the model balances fairly well when you mount it on the stand, uh, better than the C model did. And uh, that's basically it for parts. Um, so yeah, there's there's more parts than the Enterprise C had. Now let's take a look at the uh, construction sheet here, and we'll see right off the bat that you can see there's quite a bit more sub assemblies going on than there were on, uh, and then there are on some of the other Star Trek ships. So yeah, you've got a lot of detail parts going on in various assemblies here. Still pretty straightforward as far as Enterprise models go, upper and lower saucer half. You have your uh, two sides to the, uh, the two sides and the top to the uh, secondary hull. Now the secondary hull on this one is, is, is several sub-assemblies all combining to make one instead of just two pieces like on most Enterprise model kits. So that'll be, that'll be fun to work on that. And uh, you can see that basically the same thing, the warp and cells go together, they drop down onto the pylons, so the pylons drop onto the secondary hull and then Finally, the uh, saucer attaches, and then you mount it to the stand. <clears throat> and on the back here, we have color suggestions and decal placement guides. So, yeah, and there, and like the Enterprise C, there's there's quite a bit of paint detail on this one. There's uh, various shades of uh, our familiar robin egg blue and our flanker blue and some of our other different types of grays and an overall off-white color for the uh, for the base color of the hull. So yeah, this will be a fun one to detail and paint. I haven't made up my mind yet if I'm going to light this one or not. I'm still kind of kicking that one around. It'll, it'll be fairly easy to light if you do light it. The only issue being is that uh, there are no uh, window ports uh, on these parts as far as uh, to use as guidelines. Uh, the Excelsior model that I have, a pretty good idea of, you know, that one turned out pretty well as far as the, the holes that are on that one as far as I did uh, the windowing. But these... Um, uh, these pieces here, I mean, you just you just have to use some reference photos and, and uh, you know, you, you want to be careful to try to keep these, uh, if you do do window ports on it, you want to make sure they're pretty small because that gives it that sense of size. If you make these huge window ports in this thing, it's just not going to, I mean, this thing is a very, very giant ship and the windows, if you look at it on screen, they appear, you know, they don't dominate the picture. They're just kind of in the background. So anyways, the uh, uh, Lighting is always a fun thing, and I'll probably decide to do that. It's just a matter of kind of figuring out what I want to do. I'm still uh, working on my shop outside, getting my area ready. I've got the the Atomic City kit out there. Uh, I'm getting ready to bring that thing back inside here and do the review on it and get going. Uh, I just had to get some things ready. It's an all-resin kit, and it's a little bit different job than doing the regular model kits. So I want to make sure we're well prepared for that and do our research and do a really nice job on that. But that won't be coming very soon. So anyways, this has been the Enterprise B in 1 1,000 scale from Round 2 Polar Lights. I really think this is a nice model. I'm, I'm really um, really happy about the quality, and I'm just glad to see that Round 2 is 
continuing to produce these and I'm glad to see that other people are out there building them as well. Well, let's take a look at the decal sheet before we finish up here. Um, yeah, th this is your basic decal sheet as you can probably see here. It's, it's pretty standard. Uh, I am actually going to order an additional decal uh, sheet for this which includes a lot more of the detailing uh, from a company called PNT. And they actually have a nice sheet out there that gives you some of the uh, the graphics and things that go on the top of the secondary hull that gives some of that detail and some of the other stuff that, that the color combination changes that the Aztec that goes on on the bottom side of the uh, secondary hull because this uh, this kit supply decal sheet is pretty mundane actually I mean kind of similar to the C you just get your basic markings uh, you are uh, given a, an extra uh, set of numbers here to do this ship as the USS Lakota if you choose to do that but uh, other than that just your basic fare here as far as uh, decaling goes so yeah that, that PNT sheet um, it's right around twenty dollars a little over twenty dollars so that's worth it and uh, it'll really make this model pop a little bit more just adding that on there so we're gonna go ahead and order that and uh, probably in the next month or so we'll get around to uh, getting this one built up and I'll have a better idea of whether I'm going to light it or not but uh, Hopefully this will give you some idea of what you're looking at if you're thinking about one of these. And uh, again, it's great packaging. Uh, the model, uh, the quality of the model, the detail seems to be really nice. Uh, this is one of the kind of cooler ships in the Star Trek line as well. It's known. It's got some history to it. So be a nice fun kit to build. So until we see you for the next video, everybody, happy modeling.